Hello and welcome to the Christ Baptist Church devotionals. We're going through the book of Nehemiah and we're now in Nehemiah chapter 6 and we've gone through from Daniel uh, to Esther to Ezra now to Nehemiah. We find ourselves covering the, the time that Israel has returned from Babylon uh, back and now at the time of Nehemiah we know that we're in uh, the year 444 BC when the 20th year of King Artaxerxes and Nehemiah has gone back to repair the temple and tear, repair Jerusalem. It's all been broken down and burned by uh, some, basically King Artaxerxes has told them to stop some years before and, uh, and so the enemies came in and just started to wreak havoc on Jerusalem. And then Nehemiah heard about this in chapters 1 and 2 and so he asked the king if he could go back and the king would help him and to rebuild Jerusalem, which the king did, and Nehemiah had much favor with the king. And he came back, saw that it was broken down, but he really had some great leadership, and with the help of God, to get the people of the same mind to rebuild everything, and much amidst great opposition from the enemies around, a man named Sambalot, the Horonite, and, and uh, there was some other men, some Arabs, and some Ammonites and people that are all against them. And not only that, what we saw yesterday was that even the own internal people, the Jews, the leaders, the aristocracy, the rich people, were actually oppressing the poor people. And Nehemiah had to take care of that. We learned about that. Well, as we keep going in Nehemiah, we see that the action just carries on in this. And Nehemiah the governor, it just was, he never had an idle day here. He was very busy as we keep going. And now what we're going to see is the real subterfuge, the, the conspiracies of the people that were outside that were trying to get them to stop. And we're going to see that. There's going to be a couple of principles on how to deal with uh, these kinds of issues in our life when we have it. And let's find out what's going on here with Nehemiah as we can learn what's going on in Nehemiah chapter 6. Follow along with me here as we begin in verse 1. Now when it was reported to Sambalot, Tobiah, to Geshem the Arab, and the rest of our enemies, that I had rebuilt the wall, and that no breach remained in it, although at that time I had not set up the doors and the gates, then Sambalot and Geshem sent a message to me saying, Come, let us meet together at Chepharim in the plain of Ono. But they were planning to harm me. So you can see, these are, look at, just, just count the the numbers of, of enemies that well-known people there, Sambalot, Tobiah, Geshem the Arab, uh, all of these people, they sent messages saying, hey, come come outside the walls and let's come out here and have a have a talk. So verse 3, so I sent message, messengers to them saying, Am I, I'm doing a great work and I cannot come down. Why should the work stop when I while I leave it and come down to you? So, they sent messages to, messages to me four times in this manner, and I answered them in the same way. So four times, they verses 1 and 2, four times they tried to make this happen. Four times Nehemiah responded the same way, which is, this is a great work that I'm doing. It's a great ministry that God has given to us, that we're doing, and why should I stop this to go talk to you? And, and the simple principle here is, when you are really engaged in in really in, in doing God's work and in, in a work that is obedient to God, whatever it might be, in your family or your work, whatever it is, when there's going to be threats and distractions that come that, that, that are going to cause you to go away, stop for a moment and say, you know what, this is a really good work I'm doing. I'm not going to have to go get distracted. These people were saying, oh, this is an emergency, this is a big deal. You know what? Nothing in life is an emergency because we all have an appointment to meet God at some point in time. That's our emergency, is not being prepared for that day. That's our emergency. You know why? Because of providence of God and the sovereignty of God, He has it all planned out in the world, no matter how hard we work or what we work on, we're never going to be doing the wrong things. Maybe we'll be doing the wrong things according to our own goals, but not according to his goals. And so we can trust that God is going to always map out the path, always cause the circumstances to be the way they are, 
And we'll still work hard doing what we should be doing, but when we're doing things that are going to honor the Lord, we're, we're raising our kids and teaching them in a certain way, and we're, and we're involved in, in helping others, and, and yes, we're working, providing for the family, we're doing things that it's all fitting together in a life that is honoring God, don't get distracted and say, oh, let me go out and meet with these other people to solve this other problem. You know what? There's no other problem more important than what you are doing in a life that pleases God. There's no other better thing you can do. And you'll trust God for the outcomes. Don't get distracted when people want to drag you away into some other kind of thing or some other kind of venture, some cause that's like a real big deal and if you don't do it, you're betraying the cause. That's ridiculous. You need to focus on what is pleasing God right here. Let Him control the circumstances. That's what Nehemiah was doing. So verse 5, Then Sampalot sent his servant to me in the same manner, a fifth time with an open letter in his hand. In it was written, It is reported among the nations. And Gashmu says that you and the Jews are planning to rebel. Therefore you are rebuilding the wall. And you are to be their king, according to these reports. You've also appointed prophets to proclaim in Jerusalem concerning you. A king is in Judah. Now it will be reported to the king according to these reports. So come now and let us take counsel together. Here's the accusation. They first said, come out and meet with us and let's talk. You know, just you with us out here on the plane. Nehemiah was wise. He said, I'm not going to go out there. That's dangerous. You guys have been after me. They meant to do me harm, he says in verse 2. Yeah, no. Uh, but he didn't accuse them. He just said, you know what, I'm busy. I'm doing God's work. And I'm not going to get taken away from it. So then they changed strategy. And they came with an open letter with people that they could bribe, and they, they could control, and came in and said, you know what, we see what you're doing here, Nehemiah. You're trying to set yourself up as king. And we're trying to get yourself set up so that people proclaim you to be king in Judah. That's going to go against King Artaxerxes. We're going to have to go tell him. And it's going to be reported to King Artaxerxes about this. Now, now come, because of this, we need to help you come talk to us and we'll straighten you out. False accusations. Threats. Oh my, I need to go defend myself. If, boy, you think you need to go defend yourself right now with Artaxerxes? And listen to Nehemiah's response. Then I sent a message to him saying, such things as you are saying have not been done, but you're inventing them in your own mind. For all of them were trying to frighten us, thinking they'll become discouraged with the work and it will not be done. But now God strengthened my hands. So there's a prayer right there. Strengthen my hands. This is getting tough. I've taken a lot of accusations. And now they could go tell Artaxerxes, and I've, I'm not defending myself. I'm not, I'm not going to be able to be there to, to, to counter the argument. We could lose the whole thing. You know what Nehemiah says? He says, no, I'm doing exactly what God wants me to do. And I'm not going to be distracted. I'm not going to worry about this. What you're saying is not true. You thought about it in your own mind. And I'm going to let King Artaxerxes make his decision based on my integrity and what he knows about me. He can trust in his integrity. We saw that in chapter 5 when he said, I didn't even eat the whole king's allowance. Nehemiah rested in his integrity. He rested in what King Artaxerxes knew about him. He rested in the truth. Sure, if it came to his doorstep, he would answer it. But he's not going to go run outside the walls and worry about it and have any kind, of, any kind of a discussion or have to run back to go back to Susan and talk to Artaxerxes. You know what? You'll say what you're going to say because I can't stop you. I can't stop accusations from coming. I can't stop all the slander. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to be who I am, and I'm going to do the work I'm doing. And I'm okay with that. And I guess there's also another principle here, is just don't get tricked into confessing the things you didn't do. Don't feel so guilty, of like, oh, I must be guilty somewhere, I'm guilty of something, and, and so therefore let me confess. No. God's just as displeased about that as He, he are when you don't confess to something you did. Don't do that. Stand on truth, stand on your integrity, and keep focused on the work that you're doing. That's what Nehemiah did right here. And so we see what happened out of that was actually great blessing. 
another time came, verse 10. So first they, they said, come, let's have a talk outside, outside the gates and, and go up out there and let's have a talk. When you know they're really not out for your best interest, they're to, they're to harm you. And then next come the accusations. He says, no, I'm not going to confess to that. I'm not going to worry about it. I know what I've done. I know where my integrity is. We're going to keep going. Next, verse 10. When I entered the house of Shemaiah, the son of Deliah, the son of Mehetabel, who was confined at home, he said, let us meet together in the house of God within the temple. Let us close the door of the temple for they're coming to kill you and you're and they're coming to kill you at night. He's saying, let's go into the temple and shut the doors to protect ourselves because people are coming to kill you. He's not supposed to go in the temple. Nehemiah's not a priest. He can't go in the temple. He knows that. Verse 11, But I said, should a man like me flee? And could one such as I go into the temple to save his life? I will not go in. See, they were trying to tempt him now to go sin, to protect himself. Why would, I, why would I go against God to protect myself? I've not done anything wrong. And yes, I know guys have been after me, but I've got people here, the community here, they'll protect me. I'm trusting in God. The whole time I'm trusting in God. So I'm not going to sin to protect myself. I'm not going to do that. And I'm not going to confess to something that I didn't do. And I'm not going to stop working to get distracted to go some solve some nonsensical problem that you've made up. See, I'm going to stay focused on the work because I know what God has for me and I'm doing it. I'm not going to get distracted in those ways. So this is a person who's actually a, a Jewish person that's with him. A man named Shemaiah, the son of Deliah. And he said, come on, we've we got to meet together and let's go in the temple to hide. Verse 12. See, he was, he was very discerning here. He could understand the intentions of these people. Verse 12. Then I perceived that surely God had not sent him. But he uttered his prophecy against me because Tobiah and Sambalot had hired him. I realized that he was hired. Well, once I knew that, you know, this guy is out to lunch. There's no way. Nehemiah understood. He was hired for this reason, that I might become frightened and act accordingly and sin. They're trying to get him to sin, so now all the Jewish people would be against Nehemiah. He's trying to get all the people against them. And these are wicked people. So they're trying to get him to become frightened and act according to sin so that they might have an evil report in order that they could reproach me. They're trying to get him removed as governor. Remember, O oh my God, Tobiah and Sambalot according to these works of theirs and also Noadiah the prophetess and the rest of the prophets were trying to frighten me. There was a bunch of people who were inside the walls that were priests and high-ranking rich, rich Jewish people that were lined up with all the enemies outside going against Nehemiah. They were more of a problem than the people outside because these are people who also had relationships with all the working people in Jerusalem. And they were against him, murmuring, creating rumors, causing all kinds of problems. And he is just staying with his integrity, staying with his work at hand because he knows there is going to be a day of rejoicing when they complete the task, which happened in verse 15. So the wall was completed on the 25th of the month, Elul, in 52 days. So Nehemiah completed the wall in 52 days from Nehemiah chapter 2 when he was took that, that night out on his, on his donkey and went out and rode around and saw the damage on the walls. 52 days he got all the people together and they created the wall. See, that's the first thing they did was made a wall. Then they're going to start building what's inside the wall. But they made it to be where there's walls that they could go. So they, they completed the wall the 50, 25th of the month in 52 days. When all our enemies heard of it and all the nations surrounding us saw it, they lost their confidence for they recognized that this work had been accomplished with the help of our God. See, by staying focused, people saw that God accomplished something here. Nothing else they could do. Also in those days, many letters went from the nobles of Judah to Tobiah. And Tobiah's letters came to them. So he knew these people are corresponding back and forth. This is wicked, wicked, wicked. The Jews are talking to the Ammonites and the Arabs and all of that, trying to, because we don't like this, this, this Nehemiah. You know, he's, he's removing all of our corruption that we've got. Verse 18, For many in Judah were bound by oath to him because he was the son-in-law of Shechaniah, the son of Aaron. 
and his son Jehoanan would marry the daughter of Meshulam, the son of Berechiah. Moreover, they were speaking about his good deeds in my presence and reported my words to him. Then Tobiah sent letters to frighten me. So the letters never stopped. They kept coming. These guys are in with each other, bribing each other, relating each other. They hate Nehemiah because he is not allowing corruption to take place. He made the people not charge interest to people who they were borrowing money. He, he stopped oppression. Oh, they hated him. They already had a system of how to make money. They didn't care whether Jerusalem was built or whether the temple was built. They didn't care about any of that. All they cared about was their, their position and their contracts and all the things that they had with the enemies outside. Just keep that going. Keep the money flow going. This is what it was. And Nehemiah was stopping all that. They tried to convince him to go outside to get distracted. They tried to accuse him of things he didn't do. And then they tried to get him to sin going into the temple. They were just doing all that. And then finally when they saw that the, the wall was completed, then all they could do was just talk about how great the people outside, this Tobiah and those people were, and talk about how wonderful all the enemies were, just do everything they could to drag this down. But God's work is not hindered by any of this. He just took a man to not be afraid, to not be afraid and distracted what's going on because he was focused on what he was doing and knew that what he was doing was according to Scripture, according to God's promises, according to pleasing to God, and he stayed on task and he didn't let himself be distracted he didn't get threatened by accusations, false accusations against him. Or when somebody tried to cause fear that would make him actually sin to protect himself. He didn't worry about protecting himself. He didn't worry about defending himself against accusations. He didn't worry about thinking that he needs to go out and get distracted with these other people out there because he knew they were after him to stop the work. Satan's always about stopping God's work. And God's work can be raising your family, providing for your family, uh, talking with your extended family, holding devotions, worship time. It is a lot of things. It's not just being the pastor or being the deacon or, 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 or singing. It's not about just those things. It's about living life that pleases God and don't be distracted. That's what Nehemiah did, and the temple was, or the, not the temple, but the walls were built for security in 52 days. Jerusalem was a big city, 52 days. They did not have cranes and equipment machines. And they were doing it under attack. I'd say God was with them, wouldn't you? Yeah, I'd say God was right there with them. They just needed a leader to stay focused on task and not lose sight of what the task was because of potential fears. Fear not. Don't defend yourself. Let God defend you. That's what we see out of here in Nehemiah chapter 6. So that's the action that's unfolding there. And we'll pick up here tomorrow in Nehemiah chapter 7.